Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts. After billions of years of natural evolution, failures are fossils, and what remains may hold the key to our survival. So what if we learned from nature to adapt to climate change and solve some of the problems brought by modern life? Stay with us. Nature has spent billions of years solving and refining many of the problems we as humans are facing today. We used to do it too, but industrialization and technological development have changed the way we relate to our environment and put great pressure on our planet, creating the challenges we are now struggling to solve. Climate change, ocean acidification, biodiversity loss, you name it. But scientists and politicians have started to look at nature again for solutions, more specifically at biomimicry. Now, what is this about? Essentially, it's about mimicking nature. It's learning from nature's successful biological mechanisms and imitating them to solve systemic problems such as climate change. And it's not a new concept. Leonardo da Vinci already applied it when attempting to build a flying machine inspired by birds. But to understand its potential, it's important to distinguish between the three levels at which it can be applied. At the organism level, it involves copying the form or structure of an organism such as trees and plants to design human constructions such as the columns of a temple. At the behavior level, it's about imitating natural processes such as the interaction between the ecosystems and its surroundings, which may be more useful to our purpose of fighting climate change and its impact. But how? Well, imagine we would design buildings to mimic the climate control features of termites mounds. Although actually, you no longer need to imagine it, as this building is already up and standing in Zimbabwe's capital city, Harare. But it's at the ecosystem level where biomimicry could have the biggest impact. This is about imitating not the shape nor the functions, but the working principles of natural ecosystems. In other words, how the different parts of an organism interact on a larger scale. An example of this includes a natural carbon removal process inspired in decomposition solutions of organisms such as fungi or earthworms. Here's Michael Sicoclier from the European Parliamentary Research Service. Decomposition is very interesting because this process involves the whole ecosystems, including trees, plant litter, microorganisms, who work together to produce a humic substance and glomerulus in which store and fix carbon. This process is really important in the global carbon cycle because it fixes nearly as much carbon as photosynthesis does. So it would be very interesting to imitate the composition and realize on these chemical processes to capture and convert carbon. It's a nice idea, but we still lack the technology to mimic decomposition in order to mitigate climate change, even if research efforts backed by the EU are underway. But what more can the EU do to stimulate development in this field? Well, both the European Parliament and the European Commission have highlighted the important role of biomimicry as an accelerator of circularity across industries and sectors. But more funds are needed. So one thing the EU could do, next to the research projects it already funds, is to promote more public and private investments and ensure policy support, as they do in the US, where the government is footing a big part of the bill for biomimicry research. There's also a need to further the understanding of nature's capacity to solve systemic problems, so more attention to education is needed. The EU will also need to develop certification schemes so that future biomimetic technologies replicating nature's chemical and biological processes to store and convert carbon can be put into practice. So there's plenty to do to pave the way for nature-inspired innovation to help solve the most pressing challenges of our time. Want to know more? Check out Nera Kulianik and Michal Sikoklier's full policy brief on the EPRS website or in our app. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening.